everyone. We are nearing La Ramada, which is our anchorage, first anchorage on our night crossing to Baja. And it will be the first test of the Starlink to see if it works outside of Guaymas. Our first attempt to order Starlink failed and it was due to an error on our part in not authorizing what our credit card company thought was a fraudulent charge. The second try went like clockwork with the Starlink shipping from Mexico City via DHL and arriving just six days after placing the order. One does have to have a valid Mexican address that the Starlink website recognizes. It does not accept all Mexican addresses, but using the Marina Fonitur address worked well. Entering a Mexican address qualifies one for the Mexican rate, which is cheaper than service in the United States. Basic service is only guaranteed for the address location. Selecting the Starlink RV option, which costs approximately $10 more a month, allows one to use the service from multiple locations at an approximate cost of $69 per month and $400 for the equipment. Our question though was, would it work in Baja? The Starlink came slickly packaged and the power over ethernet cable was already attached to the dish portion Initially, we did not realize the cable was removable, but it is a simple matter to slide the cable in fitting down the base slot to unplug it. The assembly directions were self-explanatory. Set up the dish, plug the cable into the router, connect the power cable to the router, plug in to power, and then consult the app, which can be downloaded prior to receiving the unit. The router came with a default name of Stinky, which does not readily identify the router if one has an assortment of Wi-Fi connections to choose from, such as at a marina. We promptly changed our router name to something not very original, Blondie. With Blondie online, our original placement of the dish on the sea hood revealed too many obstructions, mainly the boom. Moving the dish to the side deck worked much better, and while these numbers are not the greatest, we have seen as high as 200 meg down, and it is perfectly adequate for our needs. We are still using the side deck and have not yet decided on a permanent mount. We are looking at what other boats have been doing. But what about service away from Wymus? Here is a screenshot of the service stats while we were swinging on the hook in La Ramada on the Baja side. For the 47 minutes of uptime, it reveals 45 seconds of possible obstruction, which may not work well for a gamer, but is perfect for us to check the weather and stay in touch. And while watching a Netflix movie is an added bonus, our main objective was being able to access weather to know when to go and when anchorages may be uncomfortable at night. We are certainly happy with the service, and it's my understanding Starlink is doing a booming business with the cruisers in the Sea of Cortez. We ended up waiting in Wymas much longer than planned due to our Starlink ordering mistake. However, it gave us an opportunity to enjoy the Dia de Muertos festival which was the weekend before the actual Dia de los Muertos dates of the 1st and 2nd of November. Around 8 p.m. the Thursday before the festival, we were intimidated by the sound of nearby automatic gunfire. 
According to the newspaper, two criminal organizations are clashing for territorial control of Waimas. In spite of the intimidation factor, the festival was a success with a strong police presence. A large group of us from the marina walked over to the plaza in front of San Fernando and enjoyed the festivities. Join us next time for details on our crossing to Baja and some information on how we provision, what we bring from the United States, and what we purchase here in Mexico. So, until next time, 